So I thought I'd tell you all what I've learned about uh, high resolution displays. But then I decided that word high resolution is so misused for the last 30 years that I call it ultra HD. But pretend I'm more general than that. OK, I like a lot of pixels in my displays. My goal is to extend my working memory. That's the purpose of having big displays. It's not to be pretty aesthetically. It's to have information laid out in front of me as much as I can so I can work on it. The limitation of my thinking, one of them is how much I can hold in my short-term memory. If I can offload it to a screen, I'm ahead. OK, so that's my big goal. But I'm going to sit in front of this thing for hours. So it needs to be physically comfortable. And that involves a couple things. One is it's got to subtend a reasonable angle in my view. OK? And I'm going to tell you this vaguely because everybody is probably different. One thing, a little thing that I learned that's really important, if you're going to have a big screen and you need glasses, don't use progressive lenses, which is the normal kind for people. Use, use fixed focus glasses. It, it's worth the money. It's less than a good display. And it'll last, if you're lucky, for years, depending on how your eyes change. Mine have lasted for at least 20 years so far. Great investment. But something people don't think about. Another thing is the people who pay attention to ergonomics say the center of the screen should be a little below your eye height. That's very hard to arrange with a big screen. You have to get a custom desk. I cheat. I don't do it. It's a little higher. But doesn't mean I should allow you to cheat. OK. Um, Another reason people like big screens is for aesthetic reasons. Say, for instance, looking at movies, playing games. I don't do any of that. If you want to do that, I'm happy, but I can't give you advice. OK? Um, the way I use a screen, it's, nothing is moving very quickly. So I don't need high refresh rates and things like that. But gamers do, or they think they do anyway. Um, OK. But, sorry? The, so the, anyway, the biggest thing is a large screen. And I'm a cheap guy. So what for the last five years, the best choice has been this resolution called Ultra HD. People now call it 4K. That's a misnomer, because it isn't even 4K. And when they used to call numbers, it was the, number, the amount of vertical resolution. 4K is sort of an exaggeration of the horizontal resolution. I think it's a terrible term. Ultra HD is the right term. OK. Um, and what is Ultra HD? It's like four full HD screens put together. Two this way, two this way. So these are surely full HD. I didn't check, but that's what's normal. And Ultra HD, HD is a nice step up. So the, what I've used right now is a 39-inch monitor. Let's call it 40. And I find it works very well for me. Uh, so think of that as like four 20-inch full HD screens. So it's, it's a little more dense than the average screen, but it's not terribly dense. Now, what do you use pixels for? Up to a certain point, they can give you more information on the screen. But at a certain point, your eye can't tell the difference between pixels. So what you get after that point, well, it's a range, but I'll call it a point. What you get after that is a more elegant picture. And it's worth something, too. For example, the fonts look much prettier if there are more pixels making them up. When I started, uh, in the computer business, the first monitors I saw that had character cells in them, people had, I don't know, five by sevens to try and cram as much as possible because it was so expensive. Now we can put a lot more pixels into um, a character, and it looks a lot better. We claim it's better for you. I think it is, but I don't know that scientifically. OK, um, by the way, I expect that I'm going to run out of time. so. I will tell you, I bought this. I thought this would be a lot of fun. I bought it used. 
and it's got a 4K monitor. It's a 15.6 thing. Well, I can't use it one-to-one -one pixels, and the scaling in Linux is, is not very good. So I end up with the resolution of a full HD. I'm, I'm going to play with it more, but there are a lot of other horror shows, which are the practical things you learn when you try to do this. Here's an example. This thing comes with an HDMI interface. The HDMI interface is incapable of driving 4K. I mean, that's how stupid the computer world is. OK. Um, I, I haven't even figured out how to, careful, how to live well with having an NVIDIA and Intel um, GPU in there. So yeah. anyway, phones and tablets actually seem to use high res. People are expecting it and demanding it. Um, many people with high-end phones have at least full HD in a little tiny thing like this, but they don't think computer people care. I think they're nuts. Anyway, um, <coughs> then there's another thing that you, you, a term you might have heard of, HDR, high dynamic range. Now, for the technical among you, first of all, I gotta tell you, it means two different things. HDR in cameras means you take a multiple pictures at different exposures and you merge them. Okay, but HDR in monitors and TV sets means you get more than eight bits per color per pixel, 10 or 12. You can express much finer gradations and maybe even uh, brighter whites and, well, it sounds like laundry, and so on. Um, and I think that's a good thing, but I don't need it. I would like it. Never had it. Okay. Um, now, another thing I've learned is that TVs are a cheap way of getting resolution. Monitors are at least twice as expensive as TVs with the same performance. But the trouble is the TV people don't know you're using it as a monitor and they make it difficult for you. For example, computer interfaces that are, are display port are better than the HDMI interfaces for reasons I'll tell you a bit later. But no TV set, as far as I know, has a DisplayPort interface. They always have HDMI. And you need HDMI 2 to not have compromises. HDMI 2 is fairly recent, and lots of computers don't support it. Computer I bought last year from Dell with guts that are able to support HDMI 2 doesn't, just for an example. So that's a sad story. You have to figure out all the little bits to see if it's going to work, or you have to deal with failure. Um, so there's some things that you think are, are bad in TV sets that are bad and some aren't. One of them is, <laughs> in TV sets, they know that the human eye has higher resolution for luminance than chroma. In other words, the, the contrast versus the color. So they do things like chroma subsampling. They give full resolution to the luma, but half or less resolution to the chroma. And that sounds like a disaster. You want to have two pixels that are different to look different on your screen for a computer. It turns out, I've been living for five years with something with 422 subsampling, and it has almost never been a problem. That's because in regular text, People try to make it contrast in, in luminance anyway. So you don't really have the problem. But it sure sounds like a stupid idea. OK, um, now you don't have to put up with that. But the TV sets never tell you whether they do su chroma subsampling or not, because it's irrelevant to TV viewers. Um, another thing that's a problem is latency. TV sets have a latency delay between the signal coming in and going on the screen. That drives interactive use crazy, like the mouse isn't tracking you properly and stuff like that. So usually there's somewhere you can turn the TV set into something they call game mode or something to avoid it. But they never tell you what's really going on, so you have to discover it. Um, another thing is with TV sets, you're normally farther back, so you, you don't see them at quite a severe angle. And some of the technologies, the LCD technologies, 
really fade out at an angle. So you want to look for IPS or VA technology, which they probably won't tell you unless you go hunting deeply in the internet. Um, okay, so display port. Display port <coughs> was good enough for Ultra HD with display port 1.2 from 2010, early 2010. Whereas HDMI 2 took till 2013 to come out. So we still have a lot of things that don't do Ultra HD in the HDMI, HDMI world. And that's a shame. So beware of that one. Um, many HDMI ports, you would think, are two, turn out to be one. They won't tell you. Well, I say one, 1. 1.4 usually. Now, here's a nice cheap way of driving an Ultra HD screen, a Raspberry Pi. The latest Raspberry Pi has two HDMI 2 outputs on it, ports. That's great. It turns out, out of the box, it doesn't work. You have to find out there's a config setting saying, yeah, I really want it to be Ultra HDMI or, or HDMI 2 because it uses a little bit more power. So you have to look in this config slash boot slash config dot text and fiddle with an obscure thing. And for one of my monitors, that isn't enough. I have to turn off 3D acceleration. I believe that's a Raspberry Pi bug and I'm, I'm in, engaged in a conversation with them about it. Um, but still, for $100 to get a system that will drive two of these monitors is neat. I don't really have room on my desk to put two of them so they're visible unless I get small ones. Um, and that's about all the notes I wrote. I'm pretty sure I must have run out of time by now. Do you like those curved monitors? Do you think that's a good idea worthwhile? Never tried them. It's good for gamers, not for me, because I use my desk rolling around doing other stuff on it, and I'm not always the same place. So there's one sweet spot. Not only, well, there's a focal point for that curve, and but other than that, I think it is a good idea. What I don't know is if the material is somehow, no, I'm probably, sh I'm sure it isn't. The material needs to be mapped so that it's not um, Cartesian, regular Cartesian space to make it work right, unless you don't care about distorted windows, which maybe you don't in code. So uh, I've got questions, I don't have answers. But all the curved ones I've seen have been focusing on gamers, and as a result, they go lower resolution because gamers care about responsiveness, and the, it takes a tremendous amount of hardware to drive 4K in a, what they consider responsive. They want refresh rates of 144 or higher. You, it's just not normal to get that out of Ultra HD. Everything Ultra HD that you buy may say something else, but it's really, 60 hertz refresh. They, they have various kinds of exaggerations that let them claim other numbers, but as far as I know, that's the real refresh rate. Well, as for the curved monitor being with the gamers, <coughs> Intel actually has ones intended for business, like 49 to 850 HD displays. Okay. But so curved, because at that point, 49 inches, it's like Three really large displays next to each other. So for me, 49 inches wouldn't be a useful size. I found 40 is good. I have a 43 inch one, which I don't quite like quite as much. And some crazy business people like stacking a whole bunch of monitors. Well, this one, it's uh, not stacked by, it's really long. Right. Super letterbox. I bought a 32 Sorry, we're out of time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.